section 21.1. In this section, we're going to see a, a new concept, the um, electric potential energy, and then another new concept, the electric potential. The electric potential energy is just like any other potential energy. We have seen uh, potential energies like for instance in the gravitational case in which you can lift something and depending on the work that you're doing you're changing the gravitational potential energy it can be low if the height is not too much it can be high if it moves up and uh, we also uh, can think of a compressional potential energy like uh, that on a spring if it's a relaxed the spring it does not store a lot of energy but if we compress it it stores some energy that uh, when release it it can give us back that energy by pushing something out in the case of um, electric potential energy it is something similar in which you have uh, for instance a bunch of charges here positive charges and then a positive charge here of course there is a repulsion force between this charge and those charges and if you want to bring this one closer, like uh, from this point to this point, you have to do some work. And in doing so, uh, you're increasing the potential energy, which in this case would be electric potential energy. So we can calculate the electric potential energy by calculating the work done in moving the charge from this point to the other point. We have a case here, for instance, we have charge, uh, uh, 10 nanocoulombs charge positive at point A. And we want to move it to point B. And how much work do we have to do? Do we have to do any work? Maybe the charge will go by itself and then the field would be doing the work and not us. We can say that at this point, the potential electric uh, energy is zero. This is um, a reference point, just like height, we can always measure from any point that we want to. We can set our zero there. Or we can also move it from A to C and calculate the amount of uh, energy needed. We have in this case, going from A to B, we do uh, four microjoules of work. So if the potential energy here was zero, the potential energy here will be four microjoules. On the other hand, we can go from point A to point C and by spending six microjoules of work, in which case this charge will have a potential electric potential energy of six microjoules. So we're moving a 10 nanocoulomb charge and in going from the original point to point B, we're spending four or the potential energy ends up being four. And if we move it to C, it will be six microjoules. We can repeat that for a 20 nanocoulomb charge. And in this case, we're doing more work because we're moving more charge. Look at the fact that since we're pushing a positive charge closer to other positive charge charges, that means that we have to do work because the charge would not do that by itself. It would not get closer to the other charges because of the repulsive force. As a matter of fact, it would fly away uh, if, if uh, possible. But in this case, we're pushing it. And we're replacing what we had before, 10 nanocoulombs now by 20 nanocoulombs. Well, just a reminder for 10 nanocoulombs we spent four microjoules of work and the potential energy at uh, the difference in potential energy between points a and b was equal to the amount of work done four and between a and c is six well in this case we're doubling the charge consequently we're doubling the work so instead of having four like before or 12 uh, or 6 now we're we have 8 and 12 so it has to do with the, the charge that we're moving of course and 
we're summarizing it here for 10 if you go from a to b the final potential energy is going to be 4 and for 20 it's going to be 8 so it uh, is proportional to the charge so the next question is can you guess what the final energy but electric potential energy is going to be for if you move a 5 nanocoulomb charge well it would be half of this because 5 is half of this so it would be 2 and 3 we have it right here 2 and 3 with that we can see that um, 5 gives us uh, a potential energy of 2 and then we can um, calculate the amount of potential energy per unit charge just by dividing by the 5. So if we do that, we get this ratio. And we call this the electric potential. Not energy, but electric potential. So U is electric potential energy. V is electric potential. And the units of this are going to be joules divided by coulombs. Those are going to be known as volts. So we did it for the case of uh, 5 nanocoulombs, in which the potential energy was 2. So we get 2 over 5. We can do it for the case of 10 nanocoulombs. So the energy per charge is going to be 4 divided by 10, which is the same as 2 divided by 5. And for 20, uh, the energy per charge is going to be 8 divided by 20. In all three cases, we end up with the same number. So this, the difference in electric potential between points, say, A and B, will be independent of the charge that we're moving. It's going to be given by a single number. And this is one of the advantages of dealing with electric potential as opposed to electric potential energy. This one depends on what charge we're moving, whereas this one is independent of the charge that we're moving. So the electric potential, it is uh, defined as the electric potential energy per unit charge. So we're moving a charge and we're spending some work that stores energy. The energy stored per unit charge is going to be given by the electric potential. And of course it's independent of the charge because we're dividing it out. Now the electric potential uh, Delta V is known as an uh, electric potential difference because it relates between two points. We're going from one point to another point. And the units are, as we see here, joules per coulomb, which are known as volts. You have been familiar with this word for many years because um, the electricity at home works at uh, 120 volts. But now, now you know what a volt is. So we have here the same as uh, before, except that before we were moving the charges between points A and B, and here we're moving them between points A and C. And again, the voltage at the end, the, the difference in electric potential is going to be 600 uh, volts. So we can summarize here. We can say, well, if the voltage here is zero, and the voltage here is going to be 400 because we know that the difference between these two points is going to be 400. So the difference between these two points is going to be 600. So the voltage here is going to be 600 volts. And we no longer have charges. We're not moving charges. We're talking about points in space only. We're dividing the charge out. So the question is, if we know that this is 400 and we know that this is 600, this, the difference between this point and this point is 600 and the difference between this point and this point is 400, the question is, what is the difference between this point and this point? And for that, I ask you to click pause and think an answer. This would be one of those uh, eye clicker questions, except that you know, I'm not there, so you're not earning any points. Okay. 
Well, it is uh, 200 volts. because it's going to be the, the final potential minus the initial potential. So it's going to be the difference between 400 and 600 is going to be 600 minus 400 gives you 200. There are many sources of electric potential and usually um, the charges are the ones that set up uh, the electric potential. But um, we can measure it in different a situation like for instance the brain activity of the scalp is uh, in the micro volts region the cells in the human body operate with hundreds milli volts a battery is one of those common batteries that we buy that the ones that we use in your in your calculator is gonna be anywhere between one one and a half all the way to six nine volts household electricity uh, it's not 120. It's in, in that 100, it's 120. The static electricity. This is what you end up with when you walk on a carpet, for instance. is 10,000 volts. And the transmission lines, those that carry the, those cables that carry electricity to our homes, they operate with. Uh, some of them operate with a large, um, 500,000 volts. This is example 21.1 and let me explain this. We have a 15 nanocoulomb particle moving from point A where the potential is 300 to point B where the potential is minus 200 volts. How much does the electric potential change? Look at the fact that they are asking for the electric potential. For the electric potential, we don't care about what charge we're moving. It's going to be only the final potential minus the initial potential. But anyway, so pause, think about it, answer. So it's going to be the final potential minus 200 minus minus the initial potential of 300. So it's minus 200 minus 300 equals minus 500 volts. That's the difference be in electric potential um, between points A and B. The next question is, by how much does the particle electric potential energy, now this time we're talking about energy, the U, and we're talking about the fact that we're moving this there from point A to point B. Well, we started by saying that delta V equals delta U divided by Q. Well, this is delta V, this is Q, and we're, we want delta U. So delta U is going to be Q times delta V, which is 15 nanocoulombs times the delta V, which is uh, maybe 500 volts. So this is the answer. We just solve for the energy from the definition of voltage and we get the answer. The fact that it's negative means that uh, it is losing uh, potential energy. It goes from a point where it had more potential energy. It is like falling down. When you bring something down, it de decreases the potential energy. Okay. One question, what are the units of potential difference? Pause. Volts. We haven't seen uh, this symbol here. We're going to see it in a later chapter. The units of resistance, coulombs, joules, and farads. We haven't seen these, this one either. A positive charge is moved from position I to position F. Is its change in electric potential positive, negative, or zero? Let me do one case. Um, you have a positive charge. Imagine that you place a positive charge at point I 
and then somehow you move it to point F. What happened to its potential energy? Is it, in, is it uh, larger? If it increases, then you, you select a plus. Is it smaller? Then you got reduced, so you select a minus. Or is it the same? So no change, then you have zero change. And in this case, it would be one of the three possibilities, plus, minus, or, or zero. So you go for case one. This is, uh, if you think it was zero, then if this is zero and this is plus, plus, and minus, then you select answer A. But if you think that it is zero minus, plus, minus, then you select answer B, and so on. So look at it and pause. Well, the answer is B. This is going to be, if you have a charge going from this point to this point, it's going to be the same because it's at the same distance from the charge. So no gain. So it's going to be zero. Once that you decide that this is zero, then there are only two possibilities, A or B. So check this one. What happens when you bring a positive charge from point I to point F? Do you think that the, the potential energy will increase or decrease? And let me tell you a secret. If it does it by itself, it will decrease. It is like falling. If something falls, it decreases its, its gravitational potential energy. But in this case, if it does it by itself, it will decrease. And yes, if you have a positive charge here, it's going to go away from this other one, and it's going to go to point F. So it's going to be negative, like this one here. Once that you have the zero and negative, then you know that the answer is this one. But uh, you can check it. This is I is closer than this one, so it goes to a larger distance. Except that it's negative, so everything gets reversed. Normally, it would be like this case in which the potential energy would decrease, except that this is negative, so it increases. Now here goes from being exactly at the middle point, uh, and it moves up here. So what happens to the potential energy? Well, you're farther away, so it's going to be, uh, it will decrease. It's going to be negative. So the answer is B. One more. You have two charges that are brought separately into the vicinity of a fixed charge positive K. So this is your fixed charge positive K. This is one of the two charges, and you bring it from far away to this point. In the second case, you have this one, which is negative, and you bring it from far away to this point. So this is situation one, this is situation two. And um, the question is, the electric potential of point A is greater for the positive charge, greater for the negative charge, or the same for both. And we're talking about electric potential and point A would be the point there where you bring the charge to. Well, pause, think, and answer. Well, it is the same for both. Why? Because we're talking about electric potential and this has nothing to do with any charges that you're moving. It has to do with the position of the point with respect to the charge. So it would be the same for both. One more question. You have a positively charged particle moves from, from point I. So you have to imagine that you have a positively charged uh, point charge here, and it is moving from point one to point two. What happens to its potential energy? Well, it, uh, it is positive. You place it here, and it will go there either by itself or you move it. Well, pause. Well, the question is, do you think that the, if you place a positive charge there, it would go by itself to point two 
Well, the answer is yes, because he wants to get away from the positive charges. He wants, he wants to get closer to the negative charges. So, yes, he would move in that direction. So, the answer is decreases. Remember, if it does it by itself, the potential energy decreases. And this is a homework for section 21.1. These uh, sections have been posted also in Blackboard, these PowerPoints.